I had initially started a book about 10 years after my father died, but I didn't have the emotional distance that I needed at that point to write this book. And uh, one of the reasons I wrote this book was because I was aware of some of the biographies that had been written about my dad that described a person that was so remotely different than, than the father that, and the, you know, the father and the man that I knew, not to mention that they were uh, frequently very fallacious accounts and just out and out lies. And I decided that it was time to set the record straight and uh, I, it, it also became a vehicle to, uh, a cathartic vehicle to express my grief and, and what a person goes through when, when they lose their father. Uh, my mother was terrific about keeping photo albums and I had access to all the family pictures and uh, my father had saved all many, many of the letters that his parents wrote to him and that he wrote them while he was in training camp before he went to the Philippines. So those were a, a huge gift. Uh, there was one particular letter that my dad wrote me when I was having a bout of depression. I guess it was my freshman year of college. And this is a letter that I have kept in every desk I've had in every house since college that just is uh, an incredibly poignant letter and, and uh, such a gift even all these decades later to have this letter from my dad. Uh, we have a cottage that was actually on my mother's side of the family built by my, or built by her great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather and she would go to this cottage every year of her life and then when my parents got married they had their honeymoon there and then when my sister and I were born we spent every summer there as well. Um, but every year my dad had this pilgrimage to go back to his hometown in Binghamton, drive by his old house and sort of touch base with his past, I guess.